and welcome to today's live stream at 7.30. It is the Tactical Pad tutorial. I am so excited for this one, guys, and I hope you guys are too. It's a Tactical Pad tutorial all around set moves from a throwing and from a corner. So I've been look, working quite hard behind the scenes just to get a couple... Um, for me to show you early doors, but also maybe if we've got time to maybe create some with you. Now, the ones that we're going to create, um, hopefully the ones that we create, maybe comes from you or maybe comes from an idea that I have. So I love to go on Tactical Pad um, and create loads of different creative ideas. Um, so, yeah. Welcome to the stream, and let me give out a sh uh, let me give a shout out to everyone that's with me right now. So, thirty three people live with me right now on Facebook, and four people live with me with YouTube right now. So, um, Artie Dark, welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, Marco Militano, welcome to the stream. Uh, Luke Wilcox, welcome to the stream, and on YouTube, welcome Jackson, welcome Jacob, and welcome Alejandro. So this is going to be fantastic. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. So let's uh, let's set up our first tactical pad. So um, let me open a project. Uh, tactical pad. We will start with throw-ins to start with, and we are going to go with defensive half set moves okay so can everyone see that i will show you the animation that we've worked on first of all in 2d but also we've got the fantastic way on tactical pad of also doing 3d so uh let's have a little look in animations and this is what it looks like So this is some set moves that we're working on of one, how do we create space um, off the ball to receive the ball without the added pressure of, um, no, sorry, I'll, I'll say that again. It's, it, it's a way of us getting set moves where we can keep the ball between the players without having to pass it back to the goalkeeper. Because to be honest with you, I think if, you're, if your movement off the ball is good enough, you shouldn't have to pay, play it back to the goalkeeper. Um, and remember, in AMF Futsal, you can play it back to the keeper from a throw-in. Um, so anyway, let me show you this again. So let's break this one down. So what we've had here is we've got an option here, we've got an outlet here, and we've got a pivot that is just becoming our parallel. So we've got a parallel option here. Number three has ran away, so he did start here. He's ran away, and he's about to come in. Number four is now making a cut away to create space in here. Number three can't go too far because then he's creating space in behind here. They need to stay compact. So that then gives us the space that we need for number three to then uh, carry the ball. So let's go on to the 3D. Um, I think this, this, is, this is amazing. I, I love this. So we can see it from a bird's eye point of view. Have a look at that. Let me check in with my YouTube followers as well because uh, I am streaming from Facebook and YouTube at the moment. Um, okay, so let's have a little look um, of what we're doing with 3D. So let's have a look. So remember the parallel, he's made the cut, and then he can make the throw in there. So again, because of the set moves of what we've created, we're not static, we're working as one unified unit, and then it creates um, the option to be able to have the ball. Now, I want to break down really quickly. If this player here stays static, you are not creating doubt in the defense to push them back. So this player has to make the forward run. Um, that keeps that player there. If he stays there, then the greens might uh, push their line up a little bit higher. So this player has to make them believe that he's going into this area here. So then this player has to keep an eye on that area there. 
this area here and to keep unified with his defense so that this move here is really important this player here has got to stay static to start with to make this player believe that he's still defending this area here because ultimately if he throws it there that's a nice easy tackle there so he has to hold his position there the pivot is making them believe that he can come into here so if that player is running into here he is running into there they're stretching the play really really uh they're making that pitch really really big okay now last minute as this player is now coming in this player is now coming out that's when the throwing can can be uh, thrown and switched to the outlet and then we have created our another pivot now in this routine that i'm showing you at the moment i've not given you how they then attack from this i'm just showing you um how they break it down so i hope that is um okay with you guys and what we're going to do now is I am going to click off this one and I'm going to show you another set move. Uh, we're going to open that. I'm not going to save that one because I didn't make any changes. And now we're going to go on to set move number two in our own half. So, in this one again, I'm going to show you in 2D and then I'll show you in 3D straight after. Uh, let me have a check on my YouTubers. Um, okay, uh, Jackson's just asked me a question. Uh, Jackson, why is it FA with kick-ins? So FA play uh, the version of FIFA, and um, we play the, the version of AMF. Um, AMF... Um, copy the old rules of wh when it used to be because before futsal it used to be called football de salon and it used to be a throw-in and then when the name changed to futsal amf was created and carried on the tradition of throw-ins and fifa decided to create their own rules um, that are still very sim very similar to amf but they've decided to go with kick-ins okay let's uh have a look at this one So, the block. This block here is really important to create that space here. And what I've done in this video, I'm going to show you actually by using this particular movement is how we can attack from here. So remember what we said about the, the three options the ball needs to have, a pivot, parallel, and um, an outlet. They are going to create this now. So as number four is receiving the ball, number five has come as the parallel, number two has come as the pivot, and number three is about to make his way out there, or her, make her way out there. Now, what's really difficult here is number five has got to try and stop that initial ball going to number five. So he's come out. Number four has been blocked off, so he cannot go and shut that ball straight away because he's been blocked. And number three is still holding their position there. Now, if they go across, then it could get very um, murky for those two and, and it will get very confusing for the purples. Now, this is where the game of chess kind of comes into the game of futsal here. Because where number four, number five, it, it, number five could stay here and block the, the pass to the pivot. That's fine. But then there's a straight pass to number five and then he can go towards goal. So number five in this particular uh, video is going to try and stop the parallel pass. But what it does is it opens up the, the pivot. And this is why the game of chess really makes sense. Because this person is being held back. And um, this person is obviously still keeping an eye on here. But was blocked here. And then what's really difficult is number five has got to make a really difficult decision does he stay or does he stop the the parallel now obviously as it is now come in to the pivot 
Number three is going to start gambling because it's quite obvious that this is a really good opportunity for them to now score. You wouldn't just throw three up every single you every single time you attack. You would go with you would start with two and you build up to three. And then if you really think you can dominate, you can then build up to four. But you can't just chuck four up or chuck three up. You have to, it has to be in building blocks. So then they've played those little triangles here, and now they're looking for that back post. Okay, so this is what it looks like a little bit faster without me talking. And now I'm just going to check um, the YouTube comments, make sure I'm keeping up to date with all of you. Okay, no more comments on YouTube. So let's go to 3D. So remember, exactly the same video, but now in 3D. So again, the set move has made things really, really difficult for the defending team. They have to stay compact. Um, but because of our movements of where we're going at, at, in the set moves, it's making things very, very difficult. Um, for the defenders knowing to where to go. Do they stay or do they go and press or, or do they go and cover? So have a look at this again. And just to clarify as well, so we'll go through this again. If number five, who we spoke about earlier, stays here, the same move applies, except instead of going here to here, it goes straight there this player comes to the post and it's their post goal so it's it's almost checkmating number five in this circumstance because if he stays you go parallel back post and if the number five tries to intercept you go pivot back out to play past him anyway and then you go to the back post Okay, so we've now worked on that. Does anyone have any questions for me? Um, and what I will also do is I will go to uh, another set move to show you exactly what we are working with as well. So um, fire any questions that you want at me. And what I'm going to do is get the next set move up, which um, the set moves, remember, are throw-ins in our own half at the moment. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Open project. No, I'm not saving that because I didn't change anything. Set move, own half, number three. Okay, so let's have a little look. Remember, we're going to start with 2D and then we're going to um, break it down. So let's have a little watch. Okay, so again, this is, um, because it's a set move, um, I think what's important to, to, to talk about when you're talking about set moves right now is these are things that you may implement or you may ch you might you might train doing this, but it might be something that you implement in the game. So you might have four players on the court, you might have four players off the court, and you speak to your four players, you get them around the tactics board and say, look, this is what the opposition are defending like, I would like you to do this set move when you go on the court because they will not be able to cope with this set move because of the way that they defend. Now, when you've got those four players then enter the court, they then can try something like this and then you see if the opposition react. If they react differently and they change the way they defend, then the four that have just come off, you can get them around the tactics board again and say, look, try this one now because this is now how they've adapted now let's see if we can break them down with this set move for example okay so let's have another little look so they've made a little switch um let me go uh number four has come on the blind side of number four so red number four has come on the blind side of number four so it's going to be very, very difficult for them to, to see this move come in. And the pivot has now come on the blind side of number four for the purple to now become the parallel. Now, what makes it really difficult here, and again, you're putting them into a checkmate scenario, 
is number four for the purple is thinking, well, do I shut down this person or do I, uh, do I uh, look after this person? Now, very easily, number five could just go and mark number four now and four could start tracking. But what's going to happen here is this throwing is going to go and it's going to be a header. The header comes into here, okay? And that's what you're going to see now. So it's a header, it's a diagonal pass again, looking for the back post ready to score. Number three cannot keep going, and because it's a straight run, number three is going to find it really, really difficult to recover from that header. And we score. So let's look at it again. So remember, we have a pivot here, which is number five. He was here. Number five, four was our parallel option. And number four is coming into this little zone here. Defenses hate that little zone here because it's very difficult. Who actually does the defending in this circumstance? And um, number five is going to swap out to become the parallel. Number three is giving us our outlet because if um, these four desperately don't want some um, set move in here. However, that's why, sorry, that's why they're staying compact here. But here's our outlet, just in case this doesn't work, because they've defended really well. And when we've tried it, we have still got our outlet. And then our last option is we can throw it to the keeper as well. So let's have a little look. So he's now gone in. Remember, we've now created our little triangle, which is fantastic. And number three is very much aware of this because it's a set move. And he now knows it's going to be safe to make a forward run or a cut. As this player is coming in, number two could now come into the court. I haven't actually put this in the set move, but number two could now come in. So we've got our defensive balance. And then as we're here, number four again could be now making a cut forward. But just for this, it, just for this, uh, this instance, and he scored. So we've seen that a few times. Let's go on to 3D now so you can see it in that time. Does anyone have any questions for me? Uh, Pelle Orton, throw in futsal. Uh, yeah, Pelle, uh, this is AMF futsal, not FIFA futsal. Uh, any stuff in YouTube? No questions for me on YouTube? Very quiet today, YouTubers. Come on. Five people live with me on YouTube. <laughs> not many comments. That's all right. They're probably watching and getting really excited. Okay. Um... Right. Right. Let's have a little look in, th in uh, 3D. So you can probably see the little lift of the actual throw in this time. Because it's uh, for some reason in 2D they don't see the ball lift, but in 3D you do. So you see it's being lifted over. That would have been a header, not a kick, but I don't think they do headers on here yet. Um, but it's a little flick over in the triangle shape and then created the back option. Okay. How cool is that as well, by the way? You get to see all the different crowd. Obviously, if you start pulling off uh, all these different set moves, instead of it being an empty crowd, that will be a full packed house. <laughs> okay, so remember, it's a throw in, in that position there, and then you've got the back post. So um, again, it's a really good way of creating some set moves that outsmart, outcome the... Um, you're, you're, you're basically conning the, the opposition to think you're doing one thing and then you do another. So the outlet there is a little bit of a tease, thinking, okay, he could go there. Um, and then the little switch over here, again, you're coming on the blind side of this defender. And that's how he gets that little bit of time that he needs to head it round the corner, ready to, to lay it off to that back post. Okay, so we've now broken down this one. Um, and let's get ready for the attacking side. So this is all being based around the defensive side. Um, of how we can potentially get out of a defensive shape instead of just keep throwing it to the keeper. Now we're going to start working on what we could do in the attacking half. So again, this might try and directly set up a shot straight away. Uh, open project. Don't save it because I didn't make any changes. Okay, set move attacking number one. Okay, so let's watch it first and foremost. Okay, let you watch that one more time.
Okay. So what's really important when we're working through um, all the set moves, we got to we got to talk about why it's working and why it will work. And um, again, as well, not all set moves work every single time. You might try something and they read it. But the whole point of doing set moves is you see that a defense is defending in a certain way. The manager or the coach goes, OK, this is the way that they're currently defending. I'm going to add with four substitutions or three substitutions or whatever, or even a timeout. I'm going to I'm going to add this set move into the game to see if I can change the way that the opposition manager is now defending and it can change the game totally. So let's have a little look. What is happening here is uh, number three is coming out. It's number five. Sorry. Hang on. Let me start this again. Number five is coming out because he's going to receive the ball. Number four is going to block and show to number three that he could be um, a receiver. Um, he's, so he's kind of, well, he's kind of blocking number four because he's taking him out the game. But he's also drawing number three slightly out of position because number three and four think that he could potentially receive the ball and they don't want that and they need to be compact. Number five, who currently is on the blind side of number three, so number three won't be focusing on the pivot at all. Number five is going to come, or the pivot is going to come to receive the ball, and number three is going to come at the post to make sure that number two doesn't follow him to, to ensure that we are creating that space here, because ultimately what we want to do is create the space here. So they've made that cut here. Number five has now got into the space they want. Number four is blocking number four here and dragged number three slightly out of position. The throw-in comes in and we're now ready to pass to number three for that back post shot or tap in. Okay, so let's break that down again. They're switching over. Number five is coming. Number five is coming on the blind side of number three. He's coming in to create this space here. That's the space we want to create. Number three is coming into the area so he can receive it for the back post and to keep number two in his position here. Number four is going to block. So number four is not um, wanting to high press and it's dragging number three out because number three may not see number five because he's coming on the blind side of him, but also number three is trying to, to stay man marking for number four. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, okay, well, what's, what if number three doesn't move? Again, you use a set move depending on what the opposition are playing like. So if they're playing zonal marking, maybe I won't use this one, but if they're playing man marking and they're going man for man and they're following wherever they can, then I would try and use this because it would draw number three out of position and you get to block number four. So in theory, you're taking two people out of the game and number five is coming on the blind side. So, so it would work against a team that's trying to go man for man. Russell Lewis. Uh, the colours are very similar. Purple, red, yellow might, ha uh, might have been better. Sorry, yellow might have been better. Good stuff, though. Thank you very much, Russell. Um, maybe I'll do that for, for next time. Um, I totally agree with you, actually. So, so maybe for my next videos, I will change the colours over. But thank you very much for your feedback, Russell. And hopefully uh, you are enjoying uh, the live streams as well. Right, any comments from YouTube? Right, let's have a little look. Uh... Uh, Adam Nolan said, hello, Jensen. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, um, right, let's have a look. So, let's go on to um, 2D now. I'll tell you what, actually... Is that better? Is that easier to see? Yep. 
Yeah, good. Okay. Russell, hopefully that's better for you. And hopefully that's better for all of you. Okay, let's have a look at this in 2D. Uh, 3D, sorry. Again, it's a... Uh, because it's 2D, it'll allow me to do a throw-in. <laughs> Russell. Russell comes to save the day. <laughs> Russell as well. Um, big up um, what you're doing at the moment with futsal as well. Um, what part of America are you are you coaching at the moment, Russell? Okay, let's have a look. Okay, guys, we're just going to hold the stream there for a couple of seconds. It is 8 o'clock, and it is Thank You NHS Thursday. So, guys, um, we're just going to pause the stream for a second, and we're going to go and say thank you to our brilliant NHS in England. Um, so, guys, I'll be back in roughly a couple of seconds or maybe a minute's time. So, thank you very much. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, so, uh, thank you very much for that, guys. I do apologise uh, about stopping the stream, but every Thursday, uh, we do try and stop the streams. Um, it's the right thing to do, to show respect to our fantastic NHS. Um, a few uh, comments from Russell as well, in my absence. Um, Russell is... Um, a fellow person from Yates, where is where I'm from in Bristol, um, but he's taken the plunge to go into America, and he's now coaching in Cincinnati. Um, I hope I said that right. Um, and he runs a futsal club called Pivo Futsal Academy, um, and he's also put his website down uh, below in the comments. So guys, check out some of the stuff he's doing. Um, I love the fact that I see coaches uh, traveling around the world to learn, but also to help others. Um, in, in their work. So um, big up yourself, Russell. And uh, thank you as well for telling me about changing the colour. So, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so let's have a little look at what we put so far, shall we? 3D image. Let's go. I don't know if you saw any fireworks, by the way, if you're in England, but there's a few fireworks going off where I was, which is pretty cool. So. The block, it draws this player out as well. The other player is coming, uh, this player is coming on the blind side to receive the ball. This player has made a cut diagonally to that post, ready to receive the ball, and then pass it to that back post. So, that was fantastic. Now we are going to get ready to go on to our next set move. So, open project. I haven't, oh, I did change something, but that's all right. I'll change that another time. Uh, set move, attacking half, number two. Uh, let me change the colour as well. Okay, so let's break this one down. 
I'll let you watch it a couple of times so it's easier for you guys to see. Let me show you that one one more time. Okay. So, uh, let me see if there's any questions for me on YouTube before I break this one down to you guys. Jensen, uh, welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, yes, don't worry, I remember you from FD1. Um, very, very fast, if I remember rightly, as well. <laughs> uh, welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming. Harrison Bailey, I'm glad I can help you, buddy. Okay. Um, let's break this one down a bit more, shall we? Okay, so. Again, number four is coming on the blind side of number three. And because they are crossing over each other, there is going to create a tiny bit of confusion between uh, number two and number three, but also number four. Because that slight changeover and that twist, um, you have to be very careful when you're training this as well, that number four and three don't run into each other. So it has to be um, properly trained, this one, because it can be quite confusing. Um, but it's a crossover to create that parallel pass. Now if someone just runs into the, the parallel throw, it's going to be shut down quite quickly. Now I would use this particularly when someone's trying to zonal mark. So a zonal mark, and again, they're not going to go man for man where they're just going to follow every movement we're doing. They're trying to stay into a structure and this would be something that I would particularly try and use to try and um, outthink the manager if they're if they're doing the zonal marking. Um, especially when a team is sitting in their own half and playing a little bit defensive or parking the bus that some of us might use as a term. Um, this would be a really good way of trying to unlock them and try and, um, try and move them out of the way, basically. Um, so then as that throw comes in, you've then got the back post to pass to. Okay? But what's really important is five needs to come from a deep position here. So five is we don't want five to drop too too early um, because number five uh, for yellows will drop to try and fight to, to, to follow number five but just remember number five is going to have to twist and turn or run backwards so when the time is right number five will be making a very quick cut to that back post so then you can find that pass so let's have a little look Good. Now the timing of this one is so important. To be honest with you, I put number five, four, and three running at all the t all the same time because I want to. I want you to think that they're running in a unified motion. But in a real match, you'd probably see four and three probably do their little rotation first, then number five would run. So the number five would use this m this movement here as a trigger for them then to make the run to the back post. Um, but I've put them together just because um, it's, it looks more unified. And that is how you would then unlock. Number three for the yellows as well may think that number four is going to receive it short. So it's very difficult for number three whether he shuts down number three or if he shuts down number four. Uh, number four could come and shut number four and three could then do that. Um, and if they then did that, um, because remember, we've got to look at whether the, the, the defences change. Again, they may not necessarily do that if they're doing zonal marking. But if they do, number three comes here, number three. Number four marks are number four. I can bring my keeper out and that then creates a space for our keeper to then try and find that back post with number five. Or just to have a shot. So... Um, Again, it's always really important to always have a backup. But if these players have decided to um, notice what we're doing and they've defended it really well, we have got a plan B where you can throw it to the keeper and then he's got a free shot at goal. 
Okay, uh, 39 people with me on Facebook. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, have I got any questions on YouTube as well? Remember, guys, we are uh, live on YouTube and Facebook, so please make sure that you are following and liking us on Facebook. Um, and also subscribing and clicking the bell on uh, YouTube. It's amazing to get all of your uh, support um, and it's fantastic that we can grow as a whole community and share some of the knowledge that we've got. Um, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep it going. Uh, Kent, welcome to the stream as well, buddy. Uh, Kent coaches a football club called Bocco from Bristol. Um, and he's uh, interested in learning about futsal and getting his kids involved, which is which is fantastic. Okay, let's have a little look at this in 3D now, shall we? Okay, let me move that a bit. It's a bit distorted. Okay, right, let's have a little look at this. So as it's coming in, good. And there it is. Uh, thank you for my balls as well, Russell. As well, um, my my nephews are massive Liverpool fans, so uh, sent them a couple of uh, pictures and made them jealous. <laughs> so again, this little switch over here. You're coming on the blind side of this defender here. Yes, the, uh, the pivot could decide to come and follow, and this player could start to come out. But this little change over here is going to make things very, very confusing for these three players, thinking, well, where are they going to go? And in the really um, short amount of time that they've got to think, you could create panic. Um, where there could be a little bit of um, a bit of a freeze moment from the defence. They may not just instinctively move across. They might actually panic. But again, if they if they do defend this well, you have got the option of bringing your keeper out. So now we're here. They may think that you're going to play it short here and play a 1-2, which in other rotation set moves, you can actually have that. But also, we're going to go with this parallel option. And number five has made his run, which remember, I said number uh, this player here would normally probably delay that run maybe a second uh, second after this little movement here. This movement is the trigger for him to run to the back post and he'll be there ready to hit to the post. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, that is the set move. Uh, 41 people with us on Facebook, which is amazing. Thank you for everyone that's watching, by the way. And if, you, if any of you have got questions, please fire them my way. Um, but what we're going to do now is that is the end of that set move. We're now going to go on to the next bit. So, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that was number two. So, three is in store. Da, 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 da. Set move in the attacking half for number three. So, remember, we've done three set moves from a throw in in our own half. Now we've done two, and now we're going to go on to our third set move into the attacking half. And it's important to have set moves in all different aspects because if you're doing a throw in in your own half, you're almost looking to retain possession and get out of your own half and play through the thirds. Whereas when you're going into the attacking half, because futsal is a small court, you're instead of trying to look at keeping possession, you're probably trying to set up a goal scoring opportunity, whether that's a shot or whether that's a pass to the back post. Okay, so set move attacking half number three. Let me change over the color, uh, Rob Lewis. In the US, we use uh, pass-ins. Yeah, uh, again, it depends on what uh, where you are in America, because I know there are um, there is an association um, in America, um, but over the last couple of years, they've neglected a lot of stuff with uh, AMF. But um, from what I've seen with some of the other people that have recently taken it over, they have um, started to make a few strides. And I think they're even putting plans in for a professional league in America. Um, but at the moment, the majority of stuff will be a kick in. Um, I had a, a player come over from um, Illinois 
an America and did a one-to-one session with me and he said yeah it's predominantly FIFA futsal in America and it will be for certain places in the world um, but obviously you know me sharing some of these knowledge and stuff it's hopefully going to promote AMF futsal a little bit more um, but doing both is fine it's, it's, it's good to do both futsal is futsal okay so let's have a little look and then we'll break it down and these also apply to kick-ins as well by the way let me show you one more time. Okay, so there's a few sneaky things in here that may not be so obvious at the start, but I will break them down to you of why this works. So first of all, you may not have seen this, it's already happened. Number three was actually here, and he's now blocked number four. What number three wants to do here is block the vision of what number four is doing so he doesn't go and press. But also, he wants to create this space in here, okay? Now, uh, let me start this from the beginning, sorry. So number five, um, we've got our parallel, we have our outlet, and we have our pivot. Pivot is going to um, go and uh, block. That's what you see there. Now we're making our throw to the parallel, which number two could be potentially um, pressing, and uh, high pressing, but again, remember, if I'm using a set move and I'm talking to my players on the side, it may have been because I've seen that number two is not actually pressing five quite aggressively, he's sitting off. Number four is now coming on the blind side of uh, number three. Well, actually, no, no, that actually, no, I'm going to take that back. He's not running on the blind side of number three because number three will probably be half looking at number four and watching the play. But because number four is coming in so fast and last minute, when the throw in does come in, it's going to be a quick pass to the edge of the box. And then within that, straight shot at the front post. So number three is desperately trying to get in the way of number four to create this area here, which is why we want it to score from. So the block come across nice and fast, and there it is. Now, this one would work when defences are particularly being sloppy. Um, this, oh, sorry, sorry, Russell. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is te this tends to be um, this would be what I would use if if a defence was slightly more sloppy, um, or maybe even slightly a lower level, um, because the thing is you have to have set moves for all different opposition. When you're trying to do um, a set move that you go, oh yeah, this is going to break down Barcelona, right? This is going to break down into movie star. This is going to break down Paraguay or Colombia. Sometimes that might not work with. Um, with the weaker nations or weaker countries or uh, sorry weaker nations or weaker clubs because they defend differently because they know they're not as good right or they may not know that they're going to counter attack or they might be a park in the bus type of team so this would be for me with if you're playing a team that lack a little bit of concentration maybe not maybe not necessarily the highest ability it's important to have set moves for all different types of abilities because that's how you unlock them And that is how we break it down. So watch this little block here. And now he's blocked. He's created this space in here. Number two is not aggressively defending. That gives you the space. Um, what you could potentially do as well, if I wanted to add something here, when um, he blocks, number five could block number two and then come and receive it. That is another layer. To, uh, another layer to your onion <laughs> if you want to add that in um, potentially if you want to use it against slightly better opposition that little block and then coming back may also work okay and that is that one now let's go on to our 3d shape and see what it looks like in 3d
you've probably noticed as well <laughs> I didn't do the actual looping thing on that one so I'll have to change that and there it is the block he's just done the block he's making that really fast run so the defender is gonna have to re react now again this defender might anticipate what's gonna happen and just cut in but again if he doesn't uh, if, if, if you want to add more layers to your onion, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that because I like that. Uh, this player could um, potentially go out and then come in, maybe. Um, but again, it depends on the level of players that you're working with um, and how creative that they're going to be as a team. And there we go. And remember, a lot of these are the basic structures. Um, what I would be doing is if I'm working with these set moves with players... You start with the basics of your skeleton and you go, look, this is the idea of what I want you to do. And then you train it. So are they doing show and goes? Are they doing blocks? Of course, some of them in the in the main structure, you need a block anyway. Um, but if there is no block and maybe there could be a block, like I said earlier, that maybe this player does a block and then receives the ball, um, you can add those. But the more tools you've got in your toolkit, then you can keep progressing it. You go, okay, well, we tried this and it worked. Or we tried this and it didn't work. Maybe we need to add another layer. Maybe there needs to be another feint in there. Maybe there needs another block or a screen or, or whatever you need. You can add to any idea that you've got. Okay, so that is set move. Um, number three in the attacking half. And now what we're going to try and do is go on to corners. Because we've not done corners yet. Um... But I haven't, I haven't particularly done, um, hang on, two seconds. Okay. I haven't particularly done a lot of uh, corner stuff um, for tonight. I've done three. Um, but because we've done uh, one in our own half, one in the attacking half, and then I'll do three for corners. And we've got to 51 minutes anyway. So um, by the time we've done three, we would have gone way over the hour mark anyway. So... Uh, so let's let's break this one down. Uh, open project. We don't need to save that as such because I can change the kit anytime. Uh, we're not going into here. We're going into chapter five. We're going into corners. So, oh, I've done four. Sorry. There you go. Double bonus. Let me change the color. Russell, don't worry. I got you. <laughs> I remembered. I remembered. Okay, so let's have a little look. Have a watch of it twice and then we'll start breaking it down. So this is very, very similar to what we spoke about in the last one from uh, attacking in our own half from a throw in. Who can you include your Galero in these attacks? Uh, do you mean goalkeeper? Uh, who and do you mean how? Uh, who can you include your Galero in these attacks? Uh, yeah, to, to be honest with you, yes, you can. Um, you can incorporate your keeper. To be honest with you, that that um, if, if I'm reading your question right, um, again, this would be. Um, when I'm adding keepers in, yeah, um, again, if I'm going to add a keeper into to what I'm doing, that would be another layer to what I'm doing. I've, I've got loads of, um, so let me give you an example. Uh, actually, no, I can't because then I have to click off this. Um, basically, I've got files after files after files of all the set plays and the set moves and all the ideas I've got. Um, and loads of them have got keepers in and to be honest with you when the the game's in I like to keep the keepers very much active when I'm showing things um, like this I try and keep um, the keepers out of it because that's um, an added layer if that makes sense it's, it's like if I want to add a feint or I want to add a block the keepers can be in there um, the main reason why is when um, because it, in AMF, they're not allowed in the attacking half. So if I'm shooting from my own half here, 
the the chances of scoring that is very slim. So for me, a keeper, I would like to be actively involved and buzzing around and constantly asking for the ball. When a set move is trying to work and it's not working, you play to the keeper and he's always a very good plan B. However, there are also times where um, I would play to the keeper anyway and we could have set moves to use the goalkeeper. Um, I would particularly want to use the keeper more and more if we're winning the game. If we're winning the game, you get the option to try and score. Um, but it doesn't necessarily matter if he if he doesn't score because you are technically wasting time. Um, you might get a corner out of it, um, etc. But if I'm losing the game, I don't particularly really want to be using my keeper all that much unless it's a plan B option. Unless, however, you've got a keeper that's amazing at shooting. Then again, this is how you adapt as a coach. Depending on the scenario, you, you change what you want to do. Um, okay, so uh, let's break this down again. But but by all means, Russell, there's loads of files I've got that incorporate loads of keepers. I just haven't done that necessarily because particularly with people that are uh, watching futsal for the first time that may be watching this, uh, just ease them in a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so let's break this down why this works. So first of all, number four is making a forward run. The yellow is following. This could also be a block. We're trying to create this space in here. So now that has happened, that is the right time now for, the, for here to be a little rotation. Number two is coming short. And number three has purposely stayed the wrong side of the goal of number three. He wants three to, make, to, to believe that he's marked. As that throw comes in, so number two would be using his arm to hold off number five. And it could be a chest back, it could be a head back, it could be a kick back. Whatever, whatever he wants to, to lay off the ball. And then number three makes his run. And the timing of that has got to be really, really good. So again, I'd be particularly using this if maybe if I had um, players that could read the game very well. And there you have it. Number four has got a block two to take him out of the game. And this is what we see here. He's taking him out of the game. So two is now out of the game. Number five has got to keep an eye on number three. Number three is keeping an eye on number two. Number three is following, but now has got to make that quick switch. Number two is now coming to receive the ball. And like I said, number three is purposely making three think that he's being marked. Before he makes this run, this could also be, um, he could move into here to, to make out like he's going to receive it there. Number three could come out and then he comes in. So again, this could be more layers that I could add if I need to, depending on the position or the level of what I'm coaching or who with. Again, look how cramped this is. So as Russell was stating about the keeper, the keeper could be pushed out here a lot higher and I could go to the keeper again if this was defended really well. The keeper's here ready for a shot. Okay, let's have a little look in uh, 3D. Uh, let's have a look to see if there's any questions on YouTube as well. No questions on YouTube. Okay. So let's have another little look. Good. Fantastic. So let's break it down in 3D again. A little block, a forward move here to take this player out of the game. The little rotation between these two players here coming on the blind side of this player. But also, if uh, this player has read the game, then you just have to hand him off um, and just use your body weight to, to, to get to, 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 to stabilize him away from you. Um, left hand, maybe, to hold him off and then right foot um, closest to the ball or the other way around. This player here, remember... 
making this player believe that he's being marked, but a little feint or side to side can draw this player out again if need be. If he just makes that run straight in, and you're talking high level, green or yellow would very easily just slot back in. What's really important is maybe believe that he's gonna come here ready for that shot. So maybe a, a set move that you've done previously meant that it throws into this guy and he shoots. So that, that creates doubt in this defender's mind. So when you make this run here, he comes with you and then you make your, your forward run. And that's then how you finish. Okay, one more time, one more time. Okay, so that's the end of that set move. Let's go on to number two. Again, um, you could use this one straight away, or you could use the one previously we've used. Um, which one, which other one you use first is depending on the opposition that you're playing and how they're currently defending. But using both very in quick, uh, uh, using each other in quick succession um, can really help confuse the opposition. So, for example, if you do the one where you pass it and you pass it in, and then he he goes, um, sorry plays a one two and play it in the middle and then he shoots and then you do this one that will create create more space here because number three is trying to stop this little space here so then you can go long on the throw um, but again to, to try and volley it first time and he's great technique um, can be quite hard however um, this is one of the things I love about AMF is when you take a throw in it's very similar to when you see um, in football where people are um, when people in football are doing headers and volleys and bicycle kicks and stuff, this particular, um, when, when I like uh, corners in AMF, it's, it's basically going back to your football corners. For me, I know there's loads of debates about when it goes off to the side about kicking and throwing. To be honest, I don't care whether it's a kicking or a throwing, but from a corner, my personal point of view, I love throw-ins in AMF because it brings back the whole uh, there's more of a chance of a bicycle kick, a, a volley, or a header, very similar to what you would see traditionally in football. Um, I think the kick in from a corner, I, I just don't like it. But from the side, I don't care either way. Uh, Russell, I am now following you. Good stuff, mate. Keep it up. Hope the, the shares help. Thank you very much, Russell. Um, really do appreciate that. Um, for anyone that is watching, remember we train at 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock every day UK time and we do tactics or we watch games at 7.30. So thank you very much for that, Russell. Um, we are live on Facebook. We're also live on YouTube. So um, if anyone wants to watch these back, you can go onto YouTube or you can be live with us on YouTube as well. Okay, let's have a little look. So again, number five is trying to take number four out of the game. Number three is coming in deep and number two and three are making a little rotation. Number three starts to track, maybe three doesn't go so far. Um, however, if three does stay in here, then two just needs to go a little bit further. And then a volley. And even though you might say, oh, you know, n number three can move here and there and whatever, this happens a lot in AMF futsal. Because the throwing, you can, you know, adults should be able to throw this distance. Um, because um, you can throw it further, these volleys happen. Do they always go in? No, but no free kick routine or no set routine goes in every single time anyway. It's just a way of unlocking a new idea depending on how and what the opposition are doing. Okay, let's have a little look in, two, uh, in 3D. And again, you've probably noticed I didn't do the, the throw in for the, the corner. Uh, 
Taylor Monk, um, you have two different versions of futsal. Um, you have AMF and you have FIFA. Uh, the original version of uh, futsal, which used to be called Football de Salon, um, was a throw-in. So, for example, Ronaldinho, Coutinho, all these people that were playing futsal in the original game, they would have played uh, with a throw-in. Uh, the, the new version, um, or the different version, I'd like to call it, is FIFA, where they do kick-ins. Um, but AMF is a separate association. It's a futsal-only association. But what it does is they keep to the traditions of what futsal originally was invented. So FIFA created a different version, um, but AMF keep with the traditions of the old version. So it's basically just two different versions, which which is fantastic because if you've got the option of playing both, you get a different type of experience. But even even though the games are very similar, they're just slightly different. Okay. Okay, so that's the 3D. Let's go on to set move number three. I totally forgot to change the colour on the last one. I do apologise. So I will change. I'm a nightmare, you know that. Okay, animations. Let's have a little look. Again, um, what we've done, this is very similar to what we've already spoken about. However, this is a whole new setup. Because what, what um, we've done here, let me start that again. Uh, five is just slightly moved. He was here. Number four is marking here. Number two is creating the back post just in case five runs to the back post. Number three is marking the front post to stop number three from scoring at the front post. And number five is keeping an eye on number four. So they are now pretty much defending in, in, a, in a box shape. What we've done differently to what we've done in the others is we've kept this player on the post. Now that th that is why predominantly they are defending in a box shape. Um, so our setup here has completely changed and it's changed the way that they defend. Now because this player has come inside, number five has shut down. Number three cannot go because then three is on his own. So he's got to stay. Number four could come into here. But it's dragging number five to try and shut down to stop him receiving the ball and try and and again this is if you're playing against a defense that likes to shut down quite aggressively creates this little space in here ready for a volley this player doesn't have to do a thing just stays there and that takes number three out of the game because three cannot um, move away from three just in case at any point he's fi finding that number three so he's out of the game straight away okay so um, let's have a look, little look at this in 3D And there it is. He's keeping him out of the game. A little cut on the blind side of the defender as well. Because uh, remember, his focus is here. His focus is on this player. So he's come blind side. That's going to make him panic. And think, oh no, and now which one do I mark? He then makes that cut into the middle. He's created that space, ready to have that volley. Okay, so let me show you that one more time. Okay, does anyone have any questions for me at all? Okay, um, let's go to the next animation. Have I just done number three? Hang on, let me just check.
yeah we've just done that one okay perfect see I nearly went a whole video without doing the same video twice and then I mucked up at the last one <laughs> okay right uh, first of all change the color animation 2D to start with, remember. And there we go. Show you that one more time. Uh, Taylor, thanks for that. Think a few uh, tutors and other advocates of futsal need to be aware of that. Always assume DSLR was just a different ball, not format. Thanks. Uh, yeah, well, to be honest with you, this is part of the reason I'm doing these videos. It's not to it's not to try and spread hate on FIFA. It's not to try and um, you know just be negative or anything like that. It's it's purely just to say, hey, there's a different version. There's AMF. There's FIFA. We're all friends. We're all we're all a futsal family. I I, I understand that some people you know feel like there's a war or a conflict. But to be honest with you, I I. I like watching football, I like watching FIFA futsal, I like watching AMF futsal, so ultimately it's futsal. We're a futsal family, we stick together, and um, there's different versions which actually helps players, I think. Um, if um, I was doing a training session, I may incorporate kick-ins to try and get quick quick play and things like that, but also I want to incorporate throw-ins because... Um, because it's a looping throw, it's not a normal throw, players have got to be more creative off the ball. They've got to have really good movement, um, and also they've got to be able to bring the ball down from a height. So if you look at some of the most skillful players in the world that have played AMF, there is no better example than Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho had a brilliant, um, had a really brilliant uh, combination of being a brilliant football player but also a, a very good freestyler and a good entertainer. And I believe by constantly playing futsal AMF as a young kid um, would have really helped him with his freestyle of being able to bring the ball down from, from, from a height, um, quick movement off the ball um, and playing in small areas. Um, but at the same time, you've had really good players that have played uh, FIFA futsal growing up, like your Neymars, which again, he's got really... Um, short fast feet very light on his feet um and stuff like that so i think personally futsal is futsal um it doesn't matter if you do amf or fifa we are as one big family and i think that's how it should be treated in my opinion only okay so let's break this down first of all four and three block the two yellows three and four and then three as he blocks number four is going to come short by them doing that what that does is it takes three four and five and number two out of the game number four has got to make sure that he's stopping everything at the front post number four and three have got their eye on three and f three and four for the red number two has got his eye on number two but because the ball is going to be aimed in here number two Unless he um, unless he reads what's going to happen and he already starts running in here, two has got the idea already, so he's going to get there quicker. Also, by three coming short, there could be potentially a, uh, a bit of conflict between number two and five of who shuts down number three. So there's going to be a little bit of confusion there of who needs to, 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 to get that man. And there you go. Uh, let me go through um, it again, just in case. If two reads this, and he blocks, two's there. Throw in, bring your keeper out, you've got a free shot at goal. So again, you've got your plan B. Okay, let's have a look at this in uh, in 3D. Let's have a little look. 
and go. I hope this is really helpful for you guys as well. Please uh, give me some comments of what you think of uh, what you think of what we've done, and also please make sure that you're liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, I cannot wait for when COVID-19 finishes that I can put maybe some of these in, into a practical sense so you can see it in real life as well. Um, it really does mean a lot for me to, to build on our community. Um, this isn't about, you know, trying to be famous or anything like that. For me personally, it's about bringing the community together and not just getting knowledge and just keeping it. Get that knowledge and send it out to everybody. So um, please, um, please do the same when you're doing these things. Don't be frightened to share the knowledge with everyone. Um, remember, we are futsal at the end of the day. We are a very small community in comparison to our bigger brother football. Um, so we really do have to help each other out. Share the knowledge. Um, also give me some feedback on what you think of these streams. Um, I'm always open to ideas. You've probably seen it in this stream as well when Russell said change the defending team to a yellow. Um, more than happy to, to be open-minded to change. So guys, um, thank you very much for coming to today's stream. We train every single day UK time, 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock where I actually practically do some training sessions with everybody. And then at 7.30 every day we also work with the tactical side. So we might do stuff on tactical pad or we might actually watch an AMF futsal game. So uh, Taylor, when you were talking about uh, knowing the different rules and stuff, if we ever put an AMF game out, just keep checking with us on Facebook and uh, YouTube and you'll get to watch an AMF game as well. So you'll see the differences uh, because there are a few different differences which makes the, the games unique to themselves. But at the end of the day, we're all futsal and we're all as one. So, thank you so much for everyone coming today. Um, it was fantastic to uh, pass on some of these uh, routines with you. I have got a whole database of all different things that I'm doing. They are personal to me as well. So there are some that I think, okay, well, that was just very specific to a game that I've played. So it might not be any use to everyone, but I'm always happy to, to help and do some videos like this for everyone. Um, Alejandro, these streams are in thrilling. <laughs> thank you very much, Alejandro. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Have a fantastic evening. And remember, training is tomorrow at 1 o'clock UK time. And then another one at 4 o'clock. And then another Tactical Insight on Tactical Pad tomorrow at 7.30. Have a fantastic evening. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.